this is Elena Irene Michelsen and uh, I wanted to make a documentary about and tell a little bit what me and my daughter have been exposed to for many years now. Um, I want to start in, in 2009. I uh, bought a, a farm in Froulan commune and I started my education as a child and youth worker and uh, we had horses, we had dogs, we had cats and uh, yeah, a piece of harmony until Fruna Commune gave illegal uh, allowances to build two houses and uh, a car road on the neighbor property uh, to their own family and friends. Um, so they started to work and they did this work private themselves to save money uh, that they, uh, yeah, so they didn't use professional companies. And in this way, our uh, drinking water supply got ruined, our sewage system got ruined, and we ended up with polluted and poisoned water that we got sick from. And um, I asked help for Fruna Commune since the allowances was illegal, but uh, I met close to doors. I also asked uh, uh, in a normal way if the uh, then neighbors uh, uh, and the people who had done this work that uh, broke my things on my property wanted to fix it in a normal way. Uh, in peace without court cases, they were not interested. And um, in uh, 2011, uh, I, I uh, ended in a severe problems in their life situation because of what I did and I get um, my whole property got full of water because uh, they had to make a, 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 a dam to dam up the water in on my property so um, it was like a lake <laughs> uh, so we got even more ruined so uh, we couldn't live there anymore we couldn't shower we couldn't drink the water my animals could of course also not have this water and um, I ended up to seek for a house so we would be able to shower and practice uh, cook food, all these normal things, what you have to do. And um, I, uh, in 2000 and, uh, between 2011 and 12, I uh, got a house in, in uh, Evian. Then I set paying for two houses actually. I still paid the loan on my uh, farm and I uh, paid rent for a house uh, in Evia just to have water because of this corrupted building case and that no one of the responsible ones wanted to uh, uh, make up uh, for what they had done so we had water back again and could live there. Uh, and um, yeah, I won these cases uh, because since they didn't want to fix it in normal ways, I had to take court cases and I won this. And uh, in end, uh, towards the end of 2012 and beginning of 2013, we moved back uh, to Fulham Commune. Uh, because then I thought, okay, now they will fix what they had broken. But that was not the case. Then they started to shoot with air guns towards my horses. They emptied the water buckets to my horses all the time. They were abusive to my animals, to my dogs. They were kicking my dogs. They were beating them with wooden sticks. Um, yeah, it was. And I asked help from police and police don't help me. So, and I felt very helpless. They also did things to my daughter. They. Uh, bully her, they uh, freeze her out to play with the children there. They let, uh, uh, said to their own children they were not allowed to stand with my daughter on uh, the, the bus waiting place. So she stood, had to stand there waiting alone. So they did all kind of emotional and, and, and um, yeah, emotional things uh, towards my daughter, which never should have happened already then. Uh, as I think personally, children should never be involved in, in a grown-up conflicts and, uh, or any political <coughs> conflicts also. Um, well, um, and this all they did to try, because I won a half million crowns that should cover also my lawyer costs since I won this case and uh, 
um, instead of paying that they uh, decided to do uh, really frightening things to me, my enemies and my daughter uh, to try scare me to agree with 100,000 out of uh, half a million and in the end um, when they had <coughs> drive into my side of my car, broken my car window uh, um, done a lot of abuse to my animals, like uh, what I already mentioned, they also shoot rockets towards my horses, they run in panic and my angel Maria was crying because she was afraid uh, the rockets should harm her pony and everything. So on a certain point it was just too much, I was afraid they would kill any of my animals in the end, or, or ruin them mentally completely. And, uh, all these things, and uh, in the meantime, my daughter was also beaten at uh, Froland School of uh, children of, of uh, involvement in, in, in the case in her uh, belly, in her back. So she got afraid to go to school. So uh, I agreed on 100,000 out of a ha half million, which I won, and of course, that couldn't cover uh, to uh, get a new well for water. And <laughs> fix everything they broke it. Um, and, uh, but then it seemed they decided, okay, uh, we're now going to uh, ruin her life completely and uh, we don't want her to live here anymore or in, in this vein. So um, I was exposed to um, a murder attempt in uh, 2014, June 2014. Then on the way in ambulance to the acute in Arundel Hospital, uh, Fulham Commune um, kidnapped my daughter. And um, uh, since then, and then they uh, put her with their own family and friends in a criminal network in uh, Vigilance 590, 48-21 Rieke in Arundel. Um, and uh, since then she's been full of abuse and torture marks, she's been uh, breaking down psychologically, she's been really, really scared, got skinny, pale, she don't uh, uh, have appetite for food. Uh, I have, uh, for what I say now, I have evidence to prove. I guess many of you have already seen it on my Facebook, uh, the abuse photos and torture photos I mentioned, and a recording telephone call called uh, Evidence. It is to be found on Angel of Woman's Diary Chapter 2, Evidence, on YouTube. And uh, this is my last telephone call with my daughter, and that is from 2015. There you hear her break down psychologically, and that she's really scared, and she's telling about severe neglect, that uh, they don't give a fool. And, if, uh, and she asks if I can ask for her that they will give her food, because she's very hungry, and if she asks, she don't get it. Uh, so I drove up to Froland Commune, uh, uh, the office that is uh, responsible for this, and uh, to ask if they could give her food. And uh, instead of, of fixing that problem, they called a local police officer, Robert Walter Lee, and uh, I got arrested on the parking place, uh, basically for asking food for my daughter. Um, and then after they put me in five prisons in uh, Norway, there I was exposed to abuse, and torture, and severe neglect in their official care of the Norwegian government. And um, yeah, uh, it was unhuman. Uh, it was really unhuman. Also, I think you have seen abuse uh, uh, photos of <coughs> me, uh, of what I talk about. And uh, after this documentation is posted uh, on my Facebook and YouTube, I will uh, put the links out again for both the telephone call and uh, all the abuse photos and torture photos of me and my daughter down to us. Um, and um, yeah, after they tried to break me in prison, they, yeah, they put me in on a, a prison cell with uh, urine, um, sexual assault by five men in an isolation cell. Uh, uh, handcuff torture, uh, no no food for four days, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, you never should think this can happen in Norway, but in my case it, it did. And uh, what you do see is that my daughter 
uh, they doing kind of the same things. I have documents there that she tells about food torture, that uh, they force in her the only things she don't like, for example, to have on the bread. And when uh, she don't eat it, they will break plates in anger in front of her. So she gets really scared and they will close her up on her room. There are several things on my documents which is striped over with uh, black uh, tush, let's say. So it's not possible to read and uh, what stands before and after where it's blackened out is where she tells about that they are angry at her all the time and basically that, that she's scared in the situation she was in. And uh, yeah, since 2014 I of course have tried to help her out of uh, the terrible situation and uh, have been further exposed to, to um, uh, life-threatening things uh, myself along the way and um, yeah, so far police in Norway have not helped her and uh, she's still exposed to abuse, imprisonment and, and uh, severe neglect and uh, the people who have her in their house is called Ann-Christine Ausland and Jens Wigeland and when I have been investigating this case myself and police let her down and uh, look another way for money under the table, uh, I had to go into the drug scene and the criminal scene to get any information at all about these people. Like normal people didn't know who they were. But at once when I talked with uh, drug addicts or, or uh, people using drugs or from the criminal scene, they right away knew how who these people were and couldn't believe that Fulan Commune had put her in, in a criminal and dangerous environment and, and a network of people like how Fulan Commune had done. Um, yeah, for the rest, they have, they have done everything from either theft. Uh, they have tried to uh, uh, empty my account. Uh, try ruin my life in every way possible and, and uh, interfering in um, negative ways uh, uh, even in my career. Um, my family I haven't seen um, most of them for, for nearly two years and also my family has been threatened and uh, so they kind of keep me and my family members uh, apart um, so we cannot have contact with each other, um, so that's, yeah. that's a little bit and uh, let me call this documentary one, there will come uh, more explanations and uh, let's hope that they will free Angel Maria soon and uh, return her uh, to me and uh, that I can start heal the wounds they uh, created. And uh, what I find really sad and, and, uh, is that they have made a lot of lies about me, uh, which is not true. Um, and also they have paid off doctors I never met to lie about me. And uh, yeah, for every time I have to send in hundreds of documents uh, to, to prove the truth. And uh, you know, when you keep going, doing that for over six years, you kind of start to get sick and tired of it. So I really hope that this case now uh, will uh, end and um, again that she will be returned to me and uh, I can start heal her and that she get back a normal life uh, because she's not allowed to have a mobile phone in freedom. She's uh, denied internet access. She don't have any hobbies uh, like dancing, music, because they don't want her to see others because then of course she may say something of what they expose her to. So it means I will get back a child who have basically lived as a prisoner, uh, who haven't had a normal social life like other children have. So um, yeah, it's a lot of work uh, uh, standing ahead of, of uh, basically start socialization again. Uh, that she can trust people, especially men again, after what they've done to her. And uh, because it is worth to mention that is uh, several indications of what my daughter has said and that she's been uh, uh, actually read between her legs. And uh, I've been sending photos with her from, she's uh, eight years old with uh, lipstick and makeup. And um, 
she had said, uh, why do I have to bath when all the men are looking at me, that she was forced to play a game where she got a lot herded, uh, been sent in photos of abuse of her from Spain, Denmark, all and uh, different countries. So it's also a lot of things that indicates that this is uh, international, uh, um, uh, uh, what happens to her and uh, not only belonging to Norway. Um, yeah, so this is the end of documentary one and um, yeah, let's hope they will free her now and return her and that uh, we all can support her to um, become the happy and life glowing girl she once were when she was in my care. Okay, bye. Thank you for watching.